and powerful king in Britain. His his there was once a great and powerful king in Britain. His name was Andrew Petrogen. He knew an old magician who often helped him. This magician's name was Merlin. Nobody really knew who Merlin was or where she came from. Sumo. King Andrew Petrogen loved Sumo. a beautiful young woman. And Sumo. one day he married her. My dear queen, I love you. Will you marry me? Yes, I will. Love is you. It's easy because you're beautiful. They had a son to follow other Petragon as king. When the child was born, Merlin came to other Petragon and said, My king, soon you will die, and after you die, all the lords will fight for your land. Your child will be in great danger. Kill him to me. I will come back until he is old enough. Take the child Merlin and do what you think is right. Merlin took the child, everything happened, she said. Soon the king died, and dark and terrible years followed. The lords started to fight each other as they all wanted to be king. People were no longer safe. Armies broke the country and burned villages. and killed men, women and children. This went on for 18 long years, until it became clear that the country needed a king to bring a peace again. So Merlin asked all the lords to come to a meeting. They came from all parts of the country. We will have a new king soon. I, Merlin, call all the lords to come to meeting. You have been fighting 18 long years, and now this is clear that the country needs a new king to bring peace again. We will have a new king soon. A king who will be more powerful than all the kings before him. And this is how you will know him. Suddenly, a large stone appeared on the ground. In this stone, there was a beautiful sword. A man who put the sword out of the stump will become a king. The news went through the country very quickly, and soon all the strongest and most powerful men came to Melding. Every man tried to pull the sword out of the stump, but nobody could move it. Then Merlin fetched a young man. He took the sword in his hands and it came out of the stone easily, like a knife from butter. This is Archer, your young king. He is son of your last great king. I am Arthur, the son of great other Petrigon. I am your king by birth, and I swear to be a good king for you. When the knights and lords heard this and saw the young man, they didn't want to believe that now they are king. Many didn't accept him and rolled away. So there was war. In the fourth few next year, Arthur rode to the country and fought until everybody accepted him as the real king. Everybody except one man, the Black Knight. The Black Knight lived in a castle in a dark and deep forest where no other people lived. He was the last knight that Arthur fought, and the strongest. When Arthur arrived, the Black Knight rode out of his castle on his huge black horse and started to fight the king. I am the Black Knight, the most powerful and the strongest knight of our kingdom, and I will be the king. They fought all day until both men were too tired to stand. Then Arthur's sword broke. And the Black Knight saw his chance to kill, Merlin appeared and touched the Black Knight to the arm. The Black Knight fell asleep. It's not time to die, Arthur. My sword broke. Then you need a new sword. Come with me. And he took Arthur through the forest until they came to a large place. <laughs> It was quite there and everything was very beautiful. The trees, the sky, the sun and the water. Arthur saw the beautiful woman who was walking towards him. Where are we? You are in a fairy country, in a land that other people cannot see. Why are you here? I need a new sword. And before he could say more, the long white arm came up to the water of the lake. The hand held the most beautiful sword he could imagine. This is Excalibur. No sword that men have made can beat Excalibur. Take it. It is yours. But only use it in time of war or when you're in a terrible danger. And when you die, you must give it back to those who give it to you now. Arthur took sword from Merlin and together they left the fairy country. Arthur went 
back to the plate knife. And no matter how hard the plate knife tried, he could not beat Arthur in his caliber. At last, Arthur won. And the plate knife fell to his knees and accepted Arthur as a true king. From then on, there was peace in the land for many years. Arthur fought another terrible danger at the end of his life. He knew he was dying, so he asked one of his men to take the sword and plunge it into the water. I am dying. Please take this sword through into the lake. The man pulled the sword and went to the water. But when he looked at the sword, he decided to keep it for a later kiss. It is a beautiful and magic sword. I will keep it for the later kiss. The man went to back Arthur. What did you see? The moon and the water. You haven't done what I say. The man again went to the lake and again he stopped. And what did you see this time? The dark and quiet water. Why don't you do what I ask? All of you jewels so important to you. The man went to the lake for the third time, and this time he threw the sword high into the air over the lake. At once the hand came out and caught it when it fell. A bird then appeared on the water and came towards Arthur. The woman carried him into it, and with the moon high in the sky, they sailed over the dark water to the fairy island of Avalon. Legends say that he and his knights are still there. They are sleeping inside a deep hill. If Britain is ever in danger, Arthur can back with his army and save the land. In Glastonbury Bay, in Somerset, there is a place that may be the grave of King Arthur. A thousand years ago, the land near Glastonbury was surrounded by water, and so the area was possibly the island of Avalon. And this is the end about, of the legend about the King Arthur.